Hey, there's Carmine at Peace, even though I don't look like Carmine at Peace. I am Carmine at Peace. And uh, you're listening to Tom and Zeus on the Shout It Out Loud cast. So keep listening. Keep rocking. Oh, boy. Here we go. Boy. Stop pressing the button. Star Broker Simmons. Star? Old Stanley. Is that what he does? Stop shouting. My name is Ace He's not what you would call a handsome man. Oh no, here come the kiss times. Is that a positive thing? Okay. Alright. But it grabbed me a nice cold mellow yellow. Why? Why do that to the fan? Stop it. Why? Because the fuck. Six one seven five two five zero. You do? Hey, fucko! Do you like this? Settle down. Hello. Hey, what's up there, Kiss Army? Tom and Zeus, another episode of Shout It Out Loudcast, episode one eighty one. Who is Sam Loomis? You do. <laughs> oh, wait, wrong time. Sam Loomis. Uh, I don't know. Do we find out who Sam? I don't know. We don't know. We, 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 there's, there's a lot to uncover tonight. Um, you guys stay tuned for this. This is pretty good. This is pretty fucking good. Well, yeah. I mean, we, we, I mean, we think every episode is good, but we had Roy on for a reason and he didn't disappoint. So, wow. Tom, this is going to be a, an interesting episode. With a ton of feedback. Yes, I think so. Um, well, like we always do, we get last week's feedback. Last week, we had quarantine on the whole band. That's right. Yep. Jericho and the boys. That was awesome, as always, as expected. That was a ton of fun. Uh, notwithstanding uh, Jericho's 1996 AOL uh, internet connection. Uh, but that's okay. His next telephone that he used. <laughs> uh, so, of course, we always go to the poll. And uh, the poll was which of the quarantine songs that they've released is your favorite? Heart of Chrome. No, no, no. Silver Spoon loves a deadly weapon. Heart of Chrome. The big winner at 41%. No, no, no. Coming in at 24. Silver Spoon at 20. And sorry, West Beach. We love you, buddy. <laughs> Loves a deadly weapon coming in at 15. I'm um, sorry. I think it's just fast kiss. Although no, no, no. Got 24%. So Dude, who I know it's revenge. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Revenge over the other albums. That's what yep. I think it comes yep. down to. Yep. Um, but you could pick any one of them. I think they do a great version on all four songs. So yeah. Yeah. Um, some feedback on the app. Ep- now it's funny because we have Chris Jericho. We got all these great musicians on talking about their band quarantine. The feedback was great, but people wanted to really talk about the skid marks in the knickers <laughs> <laughs> because that's what we attract. But we got a couple, a couple ones here uh, from our good, a good friend, Jim Riley. This was a lot of fun all around great guys in quarantine killer band to be Chris Jericho for a day would be badass. And let's hear it for the talented Tom dust. Yeah. Fusion tech. <laughs> Jim just throwing in everything there. I love it. Um, let's see. <laughs> Twisted Kister had a good one. He goes, he, he he puts it in quotes. All right, let's wrap this up. And then I look at the time and it says it's 52 minutes remaining in the episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Wally Vidal Espinosa says, I can't wait for quarantine to play. I'll fight hell to hold you on the inaugural SIOL cruise. Oh, don't forget about that. That's coming. Uh and this Lisa McCalick, she is a huge Jericho fan, and she yes. follows she she follows the show. She was at Creatures Fest. She said, "Awesome co- podcast." Now I know the true culprit behind the middle elevator. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, and then our then our good friend Courtney, uh, who was just on, she said, "Hashtag the Royal Skid Marks." <laughs> was that Courtney Spencer Cook? Dold Cronin Kulik. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, and then I'll go, and then the aforementioned Tom Dust. 
shows a wonderful gif of uh, the, the the beautiful princess there. But oh, uh, yes, Kate Middleton, who you ruined. I'm sorry. And then Polly the Wog sent us a YouTube video of Harold's. <laughs> Harold Snaps, I think, scoring on his own goal or something. What was it? What the fuck? How is this our feedback? Like Harold Snaps, he videos. looks like a like a like I don't know, like a 12th century Mongolian <laughs> fucking knight. I don't know, Harold Snaps. <laughs> with, with, with Dude, his he looks mustache. He looks like the guy in Revenge of the Nerds Part Two. Oh, who? <laughs> oh. Snotty? They, they call him Snotty. <laughs> snotty. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So that's some quick hits with Twitter there. What do you got on the book of face? All right. Jason Warden says, another home run. I so wish this band would, could tour. Appreciate them keeping my favorite ever of my band alive. Zeus was spot on about the G and P needing to show more respect for it. I assume that means Gene and Paul. Yep. Brad Beard says, looking forward to this. Glad there's no elevator to get in. <laughs> Chris Deese, I got to stop listening to you guys at the gym. About drop my weights when Zeus did the good night, brother. God bless you. In the ace voice. This is like, a, this is multiple times people are having problems at the gym. Listen to yes. it. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it because we are not held. We do have an attorney as part of our podcast, but we are not liable if you drop a frigging dumbbell on your big toe. We hired. They they got me from the same law firm as Sam Small Print Lyman from Slapshot. <laughs> um, yeah, that that thing is like, see how silly it is. It gets you to laugh, but it'd be quiet. It's like two in the morning. All right. All right. I'm going to bed. All right. Good night. All right. Good night, brother. You think that's funny? Oh, how about my- being the. How about being there and hearing Ace say that for real <laughs> in the real Ace voice? Hey, where's the photographer? <laughs> All right, brother. Mark Flores, in this episode, when referring to Love's a Deadly Weapon, Chris Jericho says, I would bet the farm Paul Stanley had nothing to do with it. I think he meant to say that he doesn't believe Paul performed on the finished recording we hear on Asylum because I'm sure he's heard the early 80s demo of Paul laying the foundation. P.S. This song was was going to be in the follow up to Unmasked, but got ditched in favor of The Elder. Oof. And then he puts the YouTube, the uh, clip of that Deadly Weapons. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Mike Murphy wanted to take uh, issue with, I think, the sound, Tom, on the podcast. And he brought up uh, a bunch of famous sayings, apparently. Yeah, this was a good one. Yeah, Yeah. uh, there's a lot there. So uh, apparently, uh, there you go. Um, over on the, uh, loud casters page, uh, Sean DeHaan said, awesome episode guys. Always fun when Chris is on PJ was hilarious. You got to have him on more often or the reverse. Stay tuned. Yes. Charles Eaton quarantine, hanging out with Tom and Zeus. Another reason why you guys are the best kiss podcast around. Great fun. Great conversation. Hilarity poured out in piles. Jericho is always the entertainer, even with crappy hotel <laughs> Wi-Fi. A great jump start to my Saturday work days. Oh, thanks nice. for doing what you do. To quote Star Child, boom. Oh, thanks, buddy. That's awesome. Um, Don Logan ends with killer episode as expected. Number one podcast for a reason. Oh, nice. Thank you. Yeah. Over on our Instagram page, Tom. Now, Gabby DeGook, I believe, is the same uh, Jericho fan that you mentioned earlier, Tom. Oh, okay. I had such a blast listening to this podcast. Kent was so cool and Joe, too. We all know my opinion, Mr. Jericho. PJ, as the court jester, is so apt that no other dish is necessary. Mrs. Giggles. Charlie is, of course, such a sweetie, too. His voice makes me smile. And then she added, okay, being a huge Jericho-holic, haven't heard that term in years, of course I would listen in. 
But this was literally the same vibes I got from all of the guys on quarantine from Creature Size. Literally the best from all angles. Maybe I am a sucker for Boston accents too. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. We hear about it all the time. Our Boston accents. So just want to just say it out there. We actually got a compliment on them, Tom. Yes. So, um, And then Party Man says, found you on here as well. Never knew you guys were on Instagram as well. Thank you, 007. No, it's not even 007. It's 077 Party Man. Okay. Well, thank you very much for finding us. And you guys can find us on Instagram as well. But right now, we're going to skip on over to YouTube. <laughs> you do. Mr. Antonio 2005. I love that these guys are carrying the non-makeup flag for Kiss Music. I hope one day they will cover either Hate or In the Mirror. Yes. Oh, yeah. From the Carnival album and release it as a single. Now, in terms of missing Granny's panties, I am told PJ Sparks and Nina Hartley are on the case to find them for Charlie. Dude, PJ Sparks, she's wearing big bloomers. She ain't wearing those. Yikes. It's not the fucking Lisa Sparks that I got the cameo from. Oh, yeah. Well, he said PJ Spock. He, God damn it. I still getting them confused. Yeah. And that's why I got that 500 pound lady sending me a cameo. Thanks. She was hot. She was out of breath. <laughs> Dude, she was huffing and puffing after the first line. She's not what you on would account call of those on account of those flapjacks. <laughs> Hey guys, flapjacks. <laughs> we ain't the kiss army ain't exactly swelling up in pride because you're flipping up flapjacks. Uh-huh. You're not drinking? <laughs> Hell yeah. Who don't who don't? What you sweating at? Uh <laughs> shut up, woman. Um Mark Stewart. Buckwheat has been shot. Tom loves that. Oh, I repeat, do you know I can't find that. I would have added that clip in. Me neither. Not, I can I can only find like the video of them reporting after he's been shot. Exactly. That's yes, me too. I couldn't I find it. I can't find it on YouTube. I've looked everywhere. I couldn't find it. Obviously, yep. I would have added. Me but too. it's always the clips after he's supposedly dead. Yeah. Oh. And then somebody named Sinkin Stanley here. Uh-oh. You may have had Sam Loomis on as a guest about three months ago. Oh, well, good timing for that comment. And then Nigel Savage says, I was thinking the exact same thing. Well, you guys will get your answer. Exactly. Stay tuned, my friends. Stay tuned. All right, Tom, what do you got? A couple quick emails here before we move on. We got our buddy Tony Smith. Love this episode. Anytime is a good time when Jericho was around. My only suggestion is do not get the princess on the show. I love the show, but I don't want an hour of hearing a princess getting filled with Zeus juice. (laughs) Dude, I don't think we're getting princess Kate Middleton on this show. Hey, aim high. You never know. I want to get the actresses that played the actors uh, that played the Royal family in the, in uh, the crown. Ooh. Ooh. Plays Princess Di and the other one, but I think they're both lesbians. But I That's think okay. I might I might be able to switch them over. Let's for, try for you, one. You, you're going to try to pull a conversion like the stanza. Yeah, for on both of them. Okay. Well, Let's I'll see. just watch, and we could do we could do that too, and do it so they can enjoy themselves. <laughs> enjoy, and your, a, enjoy your cake, <laughs> and I'll put a a watermark on them <laughs> as they're enjoying themselves. <laughs> And then we got an email from the great West Beach. He was very excited to hear uh, Quarantine and Jericho talk about Love's a Deadly Weapon. Great email. And just to let you know, Wes, we forwarded your email to Quarantine for them to read. And uh, they got a very big kick out of it. So that was nice. Uh, so thank you for sending that. I know uh, that song is near and dear to your heart. So it was it was cool to hear them uh, talk, about it, talk about it and how difficult it was playing. Charlie was hilarious, like talking about that song. So that was great. Um, and then we're going to wrap up feedback here with a Facebook messenger message from Mario Aguilera, the third 
He says, hey, guys, I got turned on to you guys from the ace nut swinger, Tim Bream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. That guy drives me nuts, but he is hilarious. I love what you guys bring to the Kiss podcast. I only listened to another, one other Kiss show, and now this one. I was very anxious to hear what you guys had to say about Creatures Fest, but then tragedy struck, and for that, you have my deepest condolences. You guys sound like we could all hang out in a bar or the patio with our favorite libations and talk music all night. I love when you guys have guests on and I learn even more about Kiss. Keep them coming. Again, sorry for your recent loss. Have a great day, Tom and Zeus. Well, first off the bat, Mario, thank you for your kind words. Appreciate that very much. And uh, because of that wonderful message, you, Mario, are the comment of the week. Good answer. Good answer. I like the way you think. I'm going to be watching you. <laughs> awesome, Mario. Thank you very much, man. Yes, indeed. Tom, what we do next is we give a shout out to Patreon. Uh, we love our Patreon family. They help our show out tremendously. We always get requests and ask, you know, what can we do for the help of the show? Come take a look at our Patreon account. See if that interests you and come join our family. And uh, it's a big help to us. They uh, contribute to the show. And then we have other little perks we do back for them. That's how Patreon works. And it helps us grow the show. And it's a, a, a fun family. We come up with different things that we try to do to make sure that you guys are always enjoying your membership. And uh, I can't tell you how many times that uh, Tom and I sit back with the crazy thoughts and stuff that goes on on Patreon with these guys. And uh, we really enjoy and appreciate all your help. If you guys are interested, anybody wants to help the show, Please go to patreon.com, go to Patreon, the app, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, or go to our fantastic new website. You'll see a link right when you get in, Patreon. Go there, take a look, see what you like, and hopefully you'll join in on the fun. Yep, you guys are the best. Uh, we love the Patreon family. Um, it keeps expanding. You guys are amazing. The help that you uh, give us for the show. Uh, we try to give back to you, too, with some of the things that we offer on our tiers. Uh, of course, being part of the album review crew uh, rotation of picks, uh, you guys are the best and we can't thank you enough. So please check us out. Patreon.com, Patreon, the app, and uh, just look for us. Tom, what we do next is we hop on over to Kiss World. Not much going on. No, the tour is rolling on. Um, really nothing huge going on uh, in the band per se. Uh, one little bit of Kiss related news is... Uh, it was announced that Peter Chris will be making an appearance at the New Jersey Horicon and Film Festival, um, which is September 16th, 17th, and 18th, uh, and that is in Atlantic City. And I have never been to a Horicon, and that sounds pretty friggin' awesome. Um, so who knows? Maybe that's something we'll try to uh, drag our asses to. I mean, we've met Peter, but hey. Road trip to New Jersey. Check out some horror nerds and some kiss nerds. Might be fun. I can tell you now. I know our buddy Steve and his pals from Potter Than Hell are joining. Oh, nice. They already yeah. told me they're in. So nice. I'd like to think that, uh, you know, we can get a good group together and check out Peter. Yep. And Gigi. That's right. But uh, yeah, other than that, kind of quiet. No, no new merch. No new uh news per se um obviously we're going to get into it with uh roy but the sam loomis facebook uh youtube page is down uh you know that's been shut down so we'll get into that but yeah kind of a quiet week within kiss world yeah uh tom the only other thing is it's not really kiss related but it becomes kiss related because of us apparently our buddy arnold is going around Farting in some fat actress's face. Come here, sweetheart. <laughs> what, the what, fuck? what is the problem with that? You don't like it when I fart in your face. Come here. Come here, my beautiful little lady. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Dude, it was in the, the end of days. That movie came out like 25 years ago. Dude, why is what? that news? Yeah, yeah. How did that come up? <laughs> I don't know. This actor was saying that, you know, it wasn't an accident. He did it 
He, he fought it right in her face, in people's face. He did it deliberately right in my face. Right. Let me tell you what I think of this movie. It's not a very good movie. The only good memory I have of this movie is farting in this woman's face. I don't know why she's talking about it now, but I just went up to her and I said, I'm making end of days. And that was it. Oh. <laughs> the be- this is how this is why I love our listeners. How many people tagged us in that article? <laughs> Guys, did you see this? We're like, oh, what is it? Arnold Schwarzenegger fought in someone's <laughs> face and people attacking us. I just I think of all this stuff. <laughs> How many of you had the Taco Bell for breakfast? None of you. I did. <laughs> Put that taco down now. Oh, oh fucking God. Arnold fought no tacos in some lady's face. That's awesome. Um, so that's really it for uh Kiss World, right? That's it. Sweet. Well, let's get to the episode. But before we do that, Zeus, I'm gonna take a quick break and see if uh I gotta get rid of any gas before we continue the interview. Well, I hope you have room for my fist because I'm going to ram it through your stomach and pull out your goddamn spine. By the way, ooh, I gassy. <laughs> ooh, I gassy. Not good. Anyway, Tom, um, Roy uh, was somebody that uh, you met through the underworld. <laughs> I don't know where, but um, he was a great guest last time. He is a... Uh, a, a unique let's just say that eccentric yep um and he doesn't uh pull any punches no no roy and i were kind of messaging back and forth when all the sam luma stuff was going down um and we and we wanted to have him on uh he's friends with kurt gooch he knows about what's going on in the underground world of bootlegs etc etc um, we had listeners DMing us saying, you got to get Roy on somebody saying, Hey, I think you got, like we just said, we read in the comments. Yeah. Yeah. I think Sam Loomis was on your show a few months ago. Like Zeus said, he doesn't pull any punches. Um, he's got a lot to say and he gets very excited when he says it. Uh, so this is, uh, this is really interesting. Yeah. So uh, obviously the big question is going to be who is Sam Loomis? Is he Sam Loomis? And we get to it right off the bat. Without further ado, Roy Dam. All right. Good. So, uh, so Roy, you're back. Um, everybody who's listening knows why you're back. Uh, me and you have been uh, chatting a little bit um, about what's going on with the Sam Loomis drama, the videos, all this stuff. Um, Talk to us. What do you, what, what do you what do you know? What do you hear? Mm-hmm. Who's Sam Loomis? Are you Sam Loomis? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, dude, the people on these groups are like insane. And the stuff <laughs> that they say is just like nuts, like because yeah. they don't know anything that's going on at all. But right. like, you know, I mean, I'm not saying I am or I'm not Sam Loomis. But if I was Sam <laughs> Loomis, you got to <laughs> think about it. Like, Here no, we go. seriously, I mean, you know, like. If I was Sam Loomis, like, you know, would that make me a hero to the Kiss fans and a villain to Kiss? Or like, you know, what would that make me? But I mean, anyway, I'm I'm not Sam Loomis. That is for sure. Okay. So, you know, I mean, I've actually got a bunch of people that have messaged me asking if I'm Sam Loomis. I mean, I actually got phone calls from friends that have like been with me since I was like 15 years old, like guys that have been with me like doing bootleg stuff for like, you know, my whole life. And they call me, they're like, hey are you that Sam Loomis guy? And I'm like, dude, if I was Sam Loomis, I would have found a way to sell that shit. Yeah. Well, plus so, also it, it doesn't for, for us, like for Zeus and I and the listeners, like we remember you talking to, you know, that you're, you're, you're friendly with Kurt Gooch. Yeah. You know, you mean, know him. Yeah. So the stories that we're hearing is that the person that did this, did it to, you know, quote unquote, get back at Kurt because of some kind of, you know, money thing like uh, uh, that. That's the whole thing with it. It's 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 the ultimate inside kiss drama. You know, 
All right, man. Well, okay. So I guess we'll try to start off with the story as I know it now and everything. So as far as me being friends with Kurt Gooch, like, yes, I'm really good friends with Kurt Gooch. Like we've been, you know, talking since I was about 17 years old. Like we started out liking like MTV videos and trading in the mail and stuff. I mean, we were like literally kids, like living in our parents' houses. Okay. So, you know, at any rate, you know, um, you know, I remember around 1996, like Kurt Gooch, like started getting involved, like with like doing crazy interviews with people and like tracking down information. He'd always be telling me all this stuff that he was doing. And I was always like, you're doing what, man? I never really got it until eventually he puts out the book. And then I'm like, oh, my God, like that's what he was doing. So, you know, and that sort of leads into the other parts of the story here that I'm getting at, which because, you know, basically Kurt Gooch has dedicated his entire like youth, like his whole life to like tracking down these rare kiss things. He's put in enormous amounts of hours and footwork and stuff. And I mean, like, and basically I can tell you right now, he has nothing to do with Sam Loomis. He did not give this Sam Loomis character or whoever this person is any of this stuff. You know, we actually pretty much know who it is. Um, but at any and rate, you can't, and you, and you can't, and you can't say, you don't <laughs> no, want to, I can totally say who it is. You know what I mean? Like, we'll just refer to him as Mr. Andy for right now or Andrew, but at any rate, I'll get back to that later. Let's, okay. let's talk a little bit about like what's been happening with Kurt Gooch and Go stuff. Ahead. Like, I mean, Go I'm ahead. not here to speak for him. I'm just here to like, okay. you know, I've been in these kiss groups and I tried to say like, Hey, I know Kurt and this isn't true. And I mean, these people were just all over me with like crazy disinformation and incorrect information and people that literally just like don't know anything that they're talking about. So it's going to be hard to like put all of this in a row today for you to understand. So like, you know, I'm trying to like do it in order, I guess. But yep. like, you know, as far as me knowing Kurt, you know, I've known him for a long time. He did all of this work and he's become like, you know, a big deal kiss fan, if you will. But like, you know, I mean, dude, he does like a lot of legitimate work. Like he's into image licensing, which is something before the end of the show today, I want to explain to these people that don't understand it, what it is, how it works, why it's important and who it helps and who it hurts. And like, we're going to get all that information in here today, like before yep. the end of this conversation, but sure, let me try to like, keep it in order here. I know I, sometimes I get hard to follow, but I'm going to try to go in line here. So I've known Kurt for a long time. He's done a lot of legwork to me, I guess, like, you know, he didn't say this, but I, I do the guy has dedicated his entire youth to like preserving these cool things that people don't know exist okay i mean you know and so like he started out as just a fan like me and then he went in one direction he did like legitimate image licensing so he's like part of that you know and i did like more unofficially kind of stuff like you know we kind of quit talking around 1996 which is when he was doing the book and like being Mr. Legit and like, and I was Mr. Boot guy. Right. So, you know, at any rate, uh, you know, Gooch has totally like invested his entire life into like getting all of these things. So he deserves the rewards. There's a lot of people out there that think that like he's been robbing the band and this and that, and that's not how it works. And we'll get to all of that before the end of the story. But, um, basically, you know, Gooch did not give these videos to anybody. Uh, you know, as far as I know, all of these people have made all of these accusations without a single piece of proof. There's not a text message, an email between this Kurt, you know, Kurt and uh, this supposed Sam Loomis character. You would think that if they're going to finger someone, they would be able to say, OK, and here's some emails from when I bought this stuff. And here's the text messages. And here's some payment records from when I paid him on any form. I mean, literally, you could give PayPal records, bank transfers, like anything. But this is literally just some guy who's hiding in a basement, doesn't want you to know who he is, but he wants you to know where he got everything, which is completely like not how this should be working. You can't just finger someone and say, hey, I got this from that person, unless you can back up what you're saying. And like, you know, dropping little hints about who has it and who doesn't. And we can also get to that later. But you know, I mean, basically, Gooch doesn't have anything to do with it. That's it in a nutshell. Um, you know, so let and, so let let, let me let me ahead. ask you. Oh, Zeus, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, so look, what I want to first ask, and this is the I'm not a bootleg collector. That's Tom. I mean, I'm I'm a, obviously a big Kiss guy. So what I understand, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Tom. This all started what we started hearing 
was that somebody was buying these things from, let's say, Kurt. And Kurt was saying, you will have the only copy of this. Buy it from okay, me for right 10 there, grand. Let me, let me just throw one little thing in there not to disrupt you. But basically, okay. it, let's think about the mentality of that thought that you just said. Like, yep. okay, because there is indeed a buyer circle. And I'm going to tell everybody about how it's working and who's yep. involved as much as I can. But like, you know, Kurt is not one of these people. Okay. But here's the deal. Uh, you know, I got to, oh my goodness, dude, you totally got me off track here. <laughs> That's okay. Let, uh, let, we'll get, let's get you back on track. Zeus, okay. Yeah. Zeus, go back to what you had just said. Yeah. So I, when I interjected, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got it back. So sorry guys. Um, That's all right. So yeah, you, you know, because there's so much information to follow that it gets, it gets, uh, you know, convoluted sometimes, but basically, yes. The mentality that someone would actually sell these things to a person and tell them, you are the only person that I will ever give this to. And you're sworn to secrecy. It's just yours. Like, I mean, literally, like, you know, nobody would do that. So, like, I mean, you know, that's just ridiculous to think that. But, like, you know, there is somebody who's getting this footage. And there's been a bunch of different parts of the story. There's people saying that this stuff has been stolen from A&E. There are people that are saying that they've been buying them for years. So you got to ask yourself right there, you've got a contradiction in the story. If this person has been buying them for years, then how come all of this footage is now, you know, I mean, like there's two different stories here. Somebody saying it's all stolen from A&E, another person saying that they've been buying it for years in the same breath. Like they're saying both of these things. So which one is it? But at any rate, you know, nobody would do that is what I was trying to say. I mean, nobody would be dumb enough to do that. Like I have a licensing deal for my footage. And if I, you know, sell it to somebody or give it to somebody and I tell them you're not allowed to do anything with this, I just wouldn't tell them you're the only person in the world and you're going to give me this huge amount of money and I'm going to let you be that special person. Like, I just feel like anybody involved in a transaction like that would be smart enough to no better and anybody who's involved in that transaction will be better, you know, better than to tell the other person that like both parties should know better than to think that. Roy, we're dealing with kiss tards. So <laughs> right. you're, you're speaking more highly of their intelligence than I think they're worth. But my point is the story was that, again, I'm giving you like the simple background that I hear it as a lay person outside of the bootleg era, right. like uh, area. So that Kurt would say, because they're blaming Kurt, I've got this video. Here's the video of Kiss firing Peter Chris. It's a secret video. I have it. Here, you can have it, $10,000. Then he goes to the next guy. Here, I have this secret video of Peter Chris getting fired, $10,000. It's just not a you, realistic scenario. Right? That's what's not being enough people. Said. Okay, that's so here's, so, here's so what I believe is happening. Okay, okay, go ahead. There is a circle of fans that I have always joked around and called the meet and greet gang. Okay, now these are basically Kiss fans with a whole lot of expendable money. They're very successful and good for them. <clears throat> but at any rate, they have pulled their money together, went to someone and bought this footage, whoever that may be. Because, like, I'm telling you right now, as far as Gooch is, he will never tell me that he sold that footage. He says there is no record of him selling any of it. And I believe him. I mean, what else can I say? I mean, yep. there's a million ways that that footage could have been got or people could have had it beyond him. We're also talking about an enormous body of footage. Some of it is, you know, owned by Kurt Gooch and he has a copyright and other stuff is owned by Kiss. Other stuff is owned by in-house video crews. Like, it's not like a clear-cut thing. We're talking about a whole bunch of different footage. You know, I mean, Gooch owns some of the footage that was leaked out and was being shown, but I don't think he owns all of that footage. How would it get out then? If he owned it and didn't sell, I, you know, I really can't give you an exact answer on that. If I knew, then yeah. we'd all, you know, we would all know. But so I know that. I know that there are a group of guys who have mouthed off within circles of fans. So I guess, you know, unfortunately, you would have to call a lot of this rumors. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, you know, there's strong rumors from people that I've known for a really long time that don't usually BS about things like that. And the bottom line with that I have been told is that there's a group of fans that buy the stuff. They have it. And you know, they basically control that footage. OK. And I think what has happened here is that someone who you know, uh, I will call Mr. Andy right now has basically was able to infiltrate that circle, 
through like just, you know, sheer charisma and being the younger kiss guy. And he's a cool guy to know and everything. And so, you know, Mr. Andy goes and he gets this footage from the buyer's club. Okay. Mm -hmm. He gets a hold of that footage. And then that's where the story starts to get really crazy because there's been a lot of, I mean, man, guys, it's so hard to make this make sense because there's so many people involved. So let me ask you this then. So Roy, we were talking about the website that literally no one has ever heard of <laughs> vwmusicrocks.com was the website that first published an article. Right. Gentleman by the name of Dylan Pagan. I don't know him. Never heard the name before in my life. Never heard of the website. He wrote an article and continued to write articles about these videos being leaked and wrote some inflammatory accusations where if I'm Kurt Gooch, I'm really kind of pissed because he's, he's accusing these videos of being leaked because of what we just said about, I mean, I, I have the website right here. Um, he he right. says right I'm here. Aware of, I'm aware of all of those stories. I'm aware okay. of what, I mean, so basically you're right. I mean, and that's it in a nutshell. And that's how things got out of control because and my, and my, any moron can have a website that looks official right. and looks nice. Okay. Right. But like when you really cut through all the BS, Dylan is not credited for writing any other articles that really have any merit on any other websites anywhere other than things that he's in charge of. So he's basically just a fanboy who's spreading disinformation from sources that remain anonymous at all times. And he has, again, literally came out and finger pointed at Kurt Gooch without any proof or any transactions whatsoever. So, I mean, if he wants to back up his story without getting sued for slander, then he better have all of that information. I mean, because, you know, I mean, as far as I know, he has stopped saying the names of the people involved. His last few articles, he's toned that way down. He's just so, focusing on the footage okay. and what was neat about it. And since the channel was taken down, he hasn't said a word now, has he? Because no. ultimately, I believe that this Dylan guy is involved and he's most likely involved with Sam Loomis, whoever Sam Loomis is. And right away, he already knew everything. He knew where it came from. He's been talking to Sam Loomis and he has his sources and his story has been all over the road. Like I said, from the get go, which was, he said that he'd been buying him three years. And then in, literally in the same article, he says, this footage was all stolen. And that was information that I believe Mark Ciccini from three sides of the idiots had brought into the mix. Jesus Christ. OK, so hold on. So so let, ultimately let me jump on that. Let me okay, jump on that because I want to get to my ultimate question about bringing up the Dylan Pagan article. But go yeah. ahead. Zeus. I because, you know, through the grapevine, I heard is uh, an episode recently where he mentions Mark does look, this stuff is it's too bad. And, he, and he's saying it's too bad because the stuff was stolen and it's not right. It shouldn't be released like that. You know, kiss. You know, it, it was stolen. It's well, stolen. Then so what is stolen? Be- Brand I don't understand. Be, well, here's the thing. So I guess that's where we need to talk about what I can tell you about Gucci's involvement in image rights and things like that. So right away, you've got Brandvold from the other show basically misstating everything, making people think that these things are stolen, but they're not stolen. It was, it was marked. None of this not, footage not is mine. stolen, okay? Like there are a million different variables. We're talking about all of the footage under one umbrella is impossible to really talk about because we're talking about specific pieces of video. Let's take the kite footage that was shot in the seventies on eight millimeter by a fan in the audience at a public event. Okay. Let's talk about that piece of footage. Okay. Okay. Now, if you are Mike Brandvold and you're referring to this footage as stolen, then you definitely don't know what the fuck you are talking about. It was Chikini. It It was, it was Chikini who said that. Mike Mike wasn't. Okay. Well, whoever said it from the other show. So, you know, I mean, I'm sure that they're going to be listening and they want to get involved or whatever, but the bottom line is this, that footage isn't stolen. That footage was sold by the person who filmed it and had the original eight millimeter reel. Okay. That person sells this footage in an auction. Okay. Okay. Gooch and company become the owners of said footage. When they become the owners of this footage, 
that person that shot that footage back in the 1970s, back in 74, the original filmer or the estate or the wife or some family member of them that is selling that footage signs a piece of paper that says they are giving away what is called image rights to Kurt Gooch from the original person that filmed it, okay? Because there are so many different levels of this, okay? Because when you talk about image rights, that footage now becomes property of Kurt Gooch. Right. Bottom so line, the- okay? <clears throat> and if anybody wants to use that for any documentaries, if anybody wants to use that footage for any sort of legacy projects, if KISS wants to use that footage, they have to license those image rights from the person who owns them, which is now Kurt Gooch, who purchased them from the original filmer. Okay, so okay? ultimately, Roy, that footage his footage was hold, never Roy, stolen. Okay, hold on. So ultimately, okay. my question here, when I read that that VM uh, VW Music Rocks article by Dylan Pagan, what those are very, very specific and detailed accusations. What is the motivation behind making specific false ac- like why bring up Kirk Gooch's name? Why bring up money? Why bring up that these were that he didn't hold his end of the bargain? Those are specific. Right. Well, here's the things. thing. So Again, there's got to be there's got to be a motivation. Kirk. Right. Well, that's the thing. When you talk about Kurt Gooch, he is not part of the normal KISS fan where he literally doesn't even have a Facebook page. Okay, now, but when he did have a Facebook page, he was a, here's how it works. KISS guys, I don't know if you ever noticed it, but many of them are right wing extremist type, like, you know, freaks (laughs) like Trump guys and stuff, like all of them pretty much. Like I'd say like 99.99% of them are. Okay. Okay. So Gooch is not, he's very liberal guy. Okay. So when he was in these kiss groups and stuff, he would get into arguments with these people. Okay. Okay. Lots of people don't like him for various reasons. There are lots of stories about Kurt Gooch doing, dealing with kiss fans, but ultimately, you know, he has remained, part of the legitimate licensing business around kiss. Okay. But he has many people that don't like him literally just for having things that they don't have for having different beliefs than they have. There've been arguments. He's been kicked out of groups. I mean, like I said, I don't speak for him. I'm just giving you a general observation. Mm -hmm. When you ask me who, why would they want to finger him? Well, that would be a good reason why they don't like him for any multitude of reasons. Let's finger him. That'll we'll get back the guy that we don't like and we'll rob kiss because ultimately we'll get to this later. This footage being released is robbing kiss of the ability to have never before seen footage in their documentaries in their legacy projects and their box sets and their future kissology sets. Like that's who ultimately was being hurt by this footage being released. Yeah. And you, and you bring up a great point. Yeah. Okay. Maybe they don't like Kurt personally. Maybe they're trying to fuck him, but ultimately you're fucking kiss in the kiss fans. Because when we had you on for the kiss vision episode, a lot of those things led to kiss release of the kissology videos, the official videos. So now you see these magnificent videos that people have never seen before. The quality is neither here nor there, but that gives it that nostalgic feel. So now the kiss fans are being robbed. And Kiss is being screwed when it seems like this is like a, 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 hit, a hit job on Kurt. And I just don't understand why that seems such a petty, minute thing well, that, I just, I mean, I, that, I, that I can't wrap my head around whether I I don't. And I don't even know Kurt. Never met again, him before. In my I mean, life. I don't have any proof of who would want to smear him and exactly why. All I have is there have been many incidents of him arguing very publicly with these different kiss people that own forums, people that own Facebook groups. And as you well know, I believe that Zeus here had said kiss fans were basically retards (laughs) and he's correct. Kiss tards. And they literally band together. And like, you know, he, you gotta understand Gooch has one up the admins of these groups multiple times. Like they'll talk about release dates things that happened in the KISS oh, universe, we know. Uh, things like that. <laughs> and then they will literally start to argue with these admins and they will kick him out over this and they'll be like, he's a douche. He thinks he knows everything. But here's Kurt the thing. Kurt, Gooch Kurt actually was- does know pretty much everything and you can get mad at him all day. But the bottom line is, is he has like multiple enemies in that circle. And you can see that online, like these trolly people like band together and stuff. And I mean, like when it comes to the fans in general, you know, I mean, I understand the self-interest of wanting to see the footage. 
So it's very easy to get people on board and say that Gooch is some bad guy that's keeping you from seeing what you're not, you know, these things. But that's not the truth. The truth is, is that these pieces of footage exist. They are owned by various entities. They're not all owned by Kurt Gooch. Some of them are owned by Kiss. Some people own, like literally there can be extreme incidents like with, you know, let's say the footage from uh, Japan. Let's talk about that. There's the company NHK, the original broadcast company that shot that film owns that film. Okay. Now there could be things that I'm not able to tell you about. Like maybe they have sold their catalog of all the NHK tapes to a private collector, an investor, uh, a group that deals with, with image rights, because basically if that footage is ever going to see the light of day, the people that own the image rights need to work together with kiss because okay. kiss kiss owns the music the performance right. okay someone right. else owns the image rights and right. that's where the fans cannot wrap their head around how these things are owned or not owned or who owns them or who doesn't own them again it all comes down to each piece of footage is different Different people are involved with each piece of footage. Someone who shouldn't have had all of that footage, who is clearly close with this buyer's club, where they get the footage, I can't tell you. I know that, I mean, like I said, Gooch has told me man to man, he's never sold this stuff to these people. So I have to believe him. I mean, why would he lie to me? I've known him since I was 18. I mean, there's literally nothing else I can say to defend the guy on that because it all comes down to none of the people who are saying they purchased this can prove by showing documentation that they bought it from this person. Therefore, it's just fanboys spreading rumors. Those rumors could have come from any group, any fan forum, or any other number of places. All right. I have two questions. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, my, my first one is the guy that was doing the magic book. That, Ross Radley, that, yeah. who owes me money, and I hope he's <laughs> listening to this show. Because he owes me money, you but know, he's got, he got he got part of this. He's part of this. Right. What yeah. is his role? That's and the how thing. Is he part That's the thing. See, right now, you just said right here, live on air, for everyone in the free world to hear that Ross Radley is involved in this. But here's the thing: nobody has proven that Ross Radley is part of this. Okay. Now, I I literally, I'm going to tell you guys, I'm from the outside looking in for the most part. My whole fandom with Kiss kind of stops in the year 2003. Mm -hmm. Ross Radley and stuff, he's he's new guy. You know what I mean? Like as far as this Kiss Mm -hmm. fan world to me goes, okay? I have only recently heard about Ross Radley's book that he supposedly did fans wrong. I mean, these are things that I'm just now hearing. But the problem is, is we should not be out here spreading disinformation saying that Ross Radley is involved because guess what? The only person that has said Ross Radley is involved is, let's name it again, ding, 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 two people, Dylan Pagan and Sam Loomis. Right. Well, that's They're why the I'm two asking people. You. They have the same story. They've cohort. They have pushed that story into the Kiss fandom, and that's where we're at with this. And they've pushed this story into the Kiss fandom without a single ounce of proof. Dylan, if you're watching this, prove me wrong because I would totally apologize. But you so- can't because, and I'll tell you right now, I've had people that have gone and spoke to Dylan for me. So and why, they have so, asked him for the proof, and he said, my story stands, and he literally said, I have screenshots of these conversations between him and this third party that he said to this person, I have no proof, but I stand by the purple that I have been talking to. So why n- that. Okay, I, uh, so, so, so why now? Why do this now, and why do it so rapid fire over, over a 10-day, two-week period? Why now? Do, why do it right now? Why not drip it slowly? Why? Because there's fight? a lot of people involved. Again, you've got but what's some the motivation? Stuff, what, what's the that motivation to do it right now? Some of that stuff might technically owned by Kiss. Some of that stuff is technically owned by Historic Films and Gooch. I mean, that was the other thing too. You've got people on the line talking about Gooch only holds two copyrights. Well, here's the thing: Gooch works with a legitimate licensing company. Now, if you look right. up Historic Films, they own. 
thousands and thousands of copyrights. They own the Us Festival. They own Elvis on the Ed Sullivan. They own Beatles on Ed Sullivan. They own pretty much the entire Rick James like live video history. They own bands. And the only way for this footage to ever see the light of day is if those bands license that footage that is now owned. See, like that's the game of image rights. And they, you know, I can see why fans think that's a bad thing but there's always going to be people that make money in the music business because that's why it's a business. So who let's, let's move to the YouTube page itself. It was run by Sam Loomis. We don't know who Sam Loomis is or nobody. Well, somebody does. Right. Who and how did the page get shut down? Do you know that? What's your several, thoughts on that? There were several entities involved. The reason why it didn't happen overnight is literally for the same reasons I just explained to you, because you have many people involved in owning that footage. Okay. So first person that gets kicked in the balls is Kurt Gooch. Right. So Kurt Gooch has to call up another guy who's involved. And then that person has to get his paperwork. And then they have to be able to present that to YouTube for them to take it down. They can't just call YouTube. That's not how it works. You don't just call YouTube. You don't just email YouTube and say, I'm the guy who owns this. You actually have to have what's called Vero, verified rights ownership. Okay. So in order for those videos to get taken down, somebody with verified rights to this footage contacted YouTube and YouTube then gave them what is the three strikes. If you Hmm. get three strikes on YouTube, your channel will cease to exist. So I can assure you that now Sam Loomis, who maybe in his own mind didn't even know that, wow, my God, someone really does own this and they got my shit taken down. And he's probably thinking, whoa, maybe I shouldn't do this again, or maybe something bad is happening behind the scenes. I mean, you know, and again, I have no proof of it, but I mean, you know, words like the powers that be are involved and stuff. So like, you know, I mean, just, you know, there's a lot of circle talk, you know, again, this all unfortunately comes down to to fanboy rumor stuff, but, you know, I mean, literally I'm sure Kiss was well aware of exactly what was happening, even if they're on tour, you know, with today's technology, someone can walk in a room and easily say, hey, you're not going to believe this. But hey, I mean, you know, it's like it takes two seconds. And then at that point, you know, now you've got Kiss is upset because believe me when I tell you Kiss wants to give you fans what you want more than likely. I don't speak for them either, but I would assume that if they have any business sense, they're thinking about legacy projects like the a and documentary, like an Alive 2 box set or something. And they want to put an Alive 2, you know, DVD that comes in the box set and it might have Japan 1978 and no one's ever seen that, right? Like if somebody revenge uploads all of this footage to YouTube, guess who doesn't get to put out that box set and maximum capitalize on it? Like now I have to say in my own defense, I'm the one who said that nobody can ever want to kiss. And that's true, but it will indeed diminish the value amongst diehard people that are going to buzz and talk about it. Like ultimately dollars and cents, KISS will always make the most if they just release it themselves. But, you know, as far as like needing that buzz of the fans, that's where the unreleased footage thing is such an important hook for the band. And they need that for their documentaries, their box sets, et cetera, et cetera. And when they want to put that out, Whether KISS wants to admit it or not, if they want to put that footage out, they have to deal with image rights holders. Can I ask you this? Have you been in touch with Kurt during this entire Sam Loomis YouTube thing? (laughs) Absolutely, of course. I mean, you know, I mean, I've actively been involved in making sure that that footage, I mean, because I understand the importance of it. Yep. You know, I mean, as a fan, I get that people want to see it. I'm not stupid. I'm not some heartless asshole that can't understand why. And I only care about money. But I also understand that people that have dedicated their entire lives to getting the rights to these things deserve to capitalize on them because they did the work to make that piece of video still exist. They did what it took to digitize it, to bring it to the new medium, you know, like to keep it so that Kiss can come to them and say, hey, we need your stuff. 
In your you know opinion, I mean? do you? Th- in your opinion, do you think you mentioned it a little bit? Do you think that Kiss was behind the Sam Loomis page being shut down? The the band themselves. I mean, I'm not saying that for any specific or have any definite knowledge of that, but I would okay. assume that the person who is Sam Loomis knows that. Okay. Okay. Because <clears throat> that's where the story gets a little bit more. You know, I don't want to go full conspiracy and jump off the. Jump you can go. You can here. go full conspiracy. It's no, okay. I'm not going to go full conspiracy because I mean, like, you know, let's just say that, you know, I have fairly, you know, accurate knowledge of the fact that Mr. Andy is the person who wanted to put all of these videos up because he was asked by the band not ah, okay. to do any more video projects because ultimately his stuff was too good. I mean, there's some things about Mr. Andy about in me that people don't know. Like he's actually worked with my videos that are now owned by historic films. And Mr. Andy has my footage on his channel. So you, you know, I mean, I actually gave it to him to put up. So you think that this Mr. Andy, because of that, what what you mentioned because of kiss being involved in stopping the release of, of something that this is a, that this is a revenge hit job against the band or some kind of for everyone involved. I mean, like basically this person was itchy to use his newfound fame on YouTube. And, you know, he wanted to pop the cherry. Like I've got these things that people have never seen. I can make my thing go all the way to the top. And the band was like, no, 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 only we get to go all the way to the top. So don't do this anymore, Mr. Andy. And now Mm. Mr. Andy's really upset and he's sitting there with all of these nuggets of kiss awesomeness, if you will. And he says, well, if I can't have them, no one will. And next thing you know, oh, Jed's a millionaire and he's uploading everything to YouTube. And he's also getting a chance to kick, you know, people that he doesn't like on his way, you know, while he has fun. I mean, yeah, that's sort of like where we're at. I mean, it sounds a little conspiracy theorist, but, uh, you know, I mean, the rumblings are just a little too loud that that's exactly what's going on. You know, I mean, because there are a lot, a lot of people involved in owning that footage, making sure that that footage got out. You know, I mean, you're upsetting those people. You're upsetting the people that, that paid a lot of money for that footage, because the way Mr. Andy got that footage was by being close to someone in the buyer circle. Like, let's say that, you know, let's just call the other guy, Mr. Jason. Mr. Jason gave Mr. Andy all of these video clips because Mr. Mr. Jason had the money to pay for those video clips. And that's how Mr. Andy got the video clips. And people might not know this, but Mr. Andy and uh mr jason they aren't good buddies anymore so you know he doesn't have to worry about whose toes he's stepping on all right so okay I, all right that's to, i'm trying that, to piece this all together that's some breaking conspiracy news right here on shout out loudcast but the funny the funny thing is zeus before, before you jump in the funny thing is roy uh, i we know who you're talking about okay we don't sure know everybody does we, we don't we, it, yeah we don't we, we we don't know either of them personally, um, but your story, I, I mean, for some, I, I love conspiracy theories. <laughs> I, I love them. So I'm going to say, why not? I don't know. Who knows? But Zeus, go ahead. No, I mean, more, more than anything, I'll be honest. We got more shit because we only talked about a little bit of the news. We didn't let no, people know that you were coming on. We got more. Hey, yeah, we know who Sam Lewis is. You had him on a couple weeks back. Yeah. <laughs> we get that more than anything. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, here's the that. thing, you know, for there's there's guys in these Facebook groups. Let's talk just a little bit about how these things get so out of control so easily. OK, because unfortunately, technology has given idiots the ability to speak loudly on forums that they shouldn't be talking on. It's talking about things as if they know them and their facts and everything. So. Let's take, you know, there are some of these groups that exist on Facebook that are really huge. I mean, one of them that comes to mind is when 70s Kiss ruled the world. Yep. Yes. Okay. So when 70s Kiss ruled the world is a really big group. But I mean, I got to tell you, man, George Powluck, I believe, is the guy is an admin. Like this guy has a specific beef with Kurt Gooch. So it's in it for him to help spread the disinformation. I mean, there's so many people involved in making this disinformation campaign and smear campaign go into business for itself. 
You've got another guy. He's by the name of uh, Vincent. Vincent is also on that group. And Vincent is, you know, I mean, they, they literally talk about everything like it's facts. I mean, and that's how it gets so out of control and people can easily fan these flames and make things go in a direction that they want it to. I mean, like when I went on to the when 70s Kiss World the World, I called out George and said, hey, man, you know, I know that you have a problem with Kurt Gooch. And he's like, you know, <clears throat> basically admits it, says Gooch is, you know, is a liberal and this and that. And so he's just like help pushing the agenda of these people with these stories is my point. Gotcha. Um, we have uh, me and Tom and like podcasters and things like we have a, a little fun at Kurt's expense. We call them the release police. And this is just our personal post for our show. We'll be like, Kiss will put up. Oh, Love Gun released on this day. We'll retweet him like, oh, one of our favorite albums. Kurt would come on Facebook on our page and we're like, you're wrong. It's this and that. We're like, what the fuck? This guy just loves to bust balls about all this shit. And it was all in fun. And we'd be like, oh, the release, please. Kurt, and, you know, we don't know him personally. He's reached out to us about a couple different things, especially when the biography was coming out. Nice enough guy to ask whatever. Yeah. He's a little oh, yeah. kind of a, a curmudgeon is a word I would probably come up with for him. And it is what it is. Now, the other two that you mentioned, um, one of them we saw at Creatures Fest. You know, he's, he's buddies with a couple of our friends. They were both there. We only saw well, one of them. I didn't. See, I don't know the other guy, <clears throat> but the other guy's kind of a, a grumpy bastard too, a little bit. Well, I mean, you know, these guys like were literally like you know trying to lump me in with Gooch and trying to like say because I have a thing with boots in the past that Gooch does and this and that, and I just kept trying to steadfastly like explain to them that it's image rights and this and that. But you know, I mean, they literally were like, <clears throat> you know, this is why all the Kiss fans hate you. And I'm just like, oh, my God, man. I'm like, I don't think anybody hates me. I'm no. like, if you've been paying attention, it was just a couple of years ago that I gave out over a million free Kiss bootleg video DVDs to everybody on the Internet for free, for free. And I think that might be part of like that no, Robin yeah. Hood aspect of what I was doing might have led some of these people to think that I was Sam Loomis. But that's the thing. Like I told you, if I was Sam Loomis. Dude, rock and roll Robin Hood or not, man, I would have tried to find a way to like get some kind of payola out of some video that's that big. So I'm not Sam Loomis because if I was Sam Loomis, I'd be smarter about it. Yeah, you would have charged you would have charged you would have charged 20 bucks a DVD and sold them online. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, there's a million ways to make sure that this stuff gets to people and right. you aren't the guy who gets it to them, you know. Yeah, I mean, the thing is that we were getting the the reason is because there's that, like you said, that Robin Hood aspect of you. That they're like, oh, he seems like the type that'd be vindictive enough to whoever he pissed him off to be like, oh, yeah, I don't give a fuck about money. Fuck you. I'm putting this out there. That's well, your right. That's I mean, how I you probably come across. Would. I mean, if I you had that video, across like that, I would have probably why they done think something it, like that. And that's why they think it's you, because you have that attitude about fuck him. I don't give a shit if I don't make your money. I'm well, going to fuck this guy. But, but you, the, don't, the, you wouldn't fuck Kurt because you have no problem with him. Plus, the other connective tissue that made me laugh, and I think, Roy, we talked about this, was the name itself, Sam Loomis. <clears throat> the original Sam Loomis from Psycho, and then Sam Loomis that we know from the you original Halloween. 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 Well, no, but the original Sam Loomis, though, is a character in Psycho, and then Sam. And then, oh, wow. That I didn't Sam, even, you got me today. I should have ah, already known that. Oh, no. Sam, Sam Loomis was the boyfriend of the Janet Lee character. That was his name. His name was Sam Loomis. Oh, and they did cool. that as an homage to name the doctor that in Halloween 1978. Look at Tom go. So, <laughs> so I just got schooled. Tom got so, me. On no, no, no. I'm not trying to school it. No, 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 no man. You me. got me, dude. I didn't know this. Now I do. I'm going to have to keep in mind because you will laugh. I actually got a message from a guy. I do a bunch of stuff with Halloween collectors. Yeah. <clears throat> and I actually got a message from a guy who online calls himself Sam Loomis. Uh oh. Good luck. So I literally met when the guy messaged me yesterday. I actually kind of was like, you got to be kidding me. So I, I, I hit him over the head with it. I'm like, I was like, you know, hey, man, I was like, I'm sure you've been getting a lot of messages about this name that you have on Facebook. And he says, <laughs> and he said, like, you know, oh, actually, I did somebody message me about that. And I was just like, 
yeah, man. I said, you probably don't even know, but like there's this whole crazy kiss thing going on. And the guy didn't even know what I was talking about. But I mean, there's a lot of people that like this Halloween Sam Loomis thing. But the reason I brought that name up is because of your involvement with some Halloween stuff. We'll just put it that way. Yeah. So people are like, oh, it's got to be Roy. Sam Loomis, Halloween. He did this. with, And then yeah. somebody, it's but that's more to line. set him up. That's right. It's an easy, it's an easy line to draw. But exactly. It's, a, it's, it's like a thing. setup. Move. I mean, you know, I mean, it's if it was me, I I promise you, if I was Sam Loomis, I would say right now, I said I would want credit for all of this shit. <laughs> right, right. Like flat right. out, man. I'd be like, give me credit for that shit. I'm Sam Loomis. I mean, like, I'm gonna no joke. I could show the text messages just to you guys for backing this up, but I here's the deal. Like, literally, as a joke, I messaged Gooch and I said, dude. The people are saying, I'm Sam Loomis. Let's roll with it. Let's say I am fucking Sam Loomis. Like, this is a text message that happened yeah. between the two of us. So I can prove what I'm telling you guys is legitimate. So you will know. But basically, I said, let's do it. I will pretend to be Sam Loomis. Let's like say that I'm the guy. Let's have a public feud. Like, I was all into it because, like, you know, I like to joke around and troll online a bit. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we do as well. <laughs> so i mean like you know i would have done that because it would have been funny and you know gooch was like no no let's not do that let's not do that i mean he straight up was like no i can't let you be sam loomis i was like i tried to take credit but my, my bottom line is i'm not and it's an easy line to draw that people would say i am but i'm not all right so i want to go back to something how confident are you that Mr. Uh, Andy, Andrew, whatever you call them, is Sam Loomis, and he's the shit stir that started all this. I unfortunately can only tell you that I believe I, I now I sound like Dylan fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I stand by the sources that I have. That's OK. And that, so now I sound just as bad as those cunts. And I am not like them at all because they're fucking trash, man. I mean that. Yeah. I mean, I'm just telling you, man, that's exactly what's going on. That's that's what happened. That's how he got this stuff like. You know, and, and here's the deal. I mean, I know that this Mr. Andy has ties to the boot world. So, like, maybe that stuff will see the light of day and all you guys will get what you hope for or whatever. But, you know, if that happens, it happens. But, you know, I mean, it seems as if this person has stopped. That was another thing, too. When the channel got taken down, I was literally the first person notified because I was involved in making sure it got took down. I, I literally messaged Gooch. I'm like, dude, the channel's gone. He's like, holy shit, that's awesome. So, you know, I was directly there when the thing got taken down. And I my exact words to everybody involved were, let's see if this guy really has balls and shows back up tomorrow. Because if he was really the stuff, if he really wanted to be Sam Loomis, the guy that nobody knows, and Mr. Scary, I'm going to get you, he would keep going but he didn't keep going and that's the deal see mr andy's kind of a pussy and everybody knows about that oh boy um those I mean, videos like this, you know that was literally everybody who knew about this was like that seems too sleazy for mr andy and i'm like no that's mr andy all right so those videos the stuff that got released is there a finite amount of people that you know own this so it has to be one of 15 people that own this so and you've talked to the other ones and you kind of, it's not him. It's not him. It's not him. It's him. Uh, you know, I just, I, I really, you know, I only vaguely know the exact people who are involved in the buyer circle. I only really knew about one of them who was named to me and yeah, man, I mean, that's it. You know I mean? I can't give everybody the definitive answer that they're looking for. Unfortunately, but you know, I mean, I you know the definitive answers I can give you is one, Gooch wasn't involved. Two, the people who said he was don't have any proof. Three, I'm not Sam Loomis. Four, anybody who says I'm Sam Loomis can't prove I'm Sam Loomis. So we're all in the same big ship boat together, like you know, stirring down fanboy boulevard, trying to figure out where we're going. All right. So as we as we wrap this up, and, and this has been amazing, this is why we had you on. What was your what was your um, reaction um, and what was Kurt's reaction, if you're aware, when the Sam Loomis videos started to drop? Did you well, know 
Did you know that it was going to happen? Or were you like, holy fuck, what's going on right now? No, first of all, I didn't know. I actually found out about the Sam Loomis channel on the Win 70s Kiss Rule the World page. Some fan guy put a link up to the thing and I saw it. And so I instantly became aware of the drama and I instantly, I originally, I ran right to Gooch. I was like, dude, I, people are saying this and stuff, Yeah. but here's the deal. Every day that a video came out on that channel, I was as fucking holy shit as much as you guys. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Like, I mean, seriously, it's not like I'm Mr. King just because I had a lot to do with kiss boots, you know, 20 years ago, doesn't mean that I have a key to the vault and I have already had all of this stuff. I mean, right. every time something, I, when that asylum footage came out, I was like, Holy shit. Yep. Like fucking asylum footage. But you know, I mean, like I was actually picking apart the technical aspects of where that stuff would have came from and how it was, how they got it. And I mean, you know, it's just like, you know, let's take, for example, that piece of footage from the Atlanta in store. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I mean, dude, it's pretty simple. A news station filmed that piece of video. It's candid video. It doesn't have anything to do with kiss. The news station owns that tape. The news station is willing to sell that master tape to a private party who then becomes the owner of that piece of footage and not even kiss at that point has the rights to sell or do anything with that footage. And that's what we all need to keep in mind is that like, you know, there's too many players in the, the game for it to just be one guy against one guy and all of this. I mean, there's so many players involved, you know I mean? That's, <clears throat> that's it in a nutshell, but. Well, my last thing for you would be, where do you see this going? Do you see somebody else taking up the reins and trying to load some more stuff on? Or do you think this is Shit, dead man. and done? As a guy who just loves the fucking game as much as I do, hell yeah, I hope this <laughs> Gooch is going <laughs> to hate me for this shit because I know he's going to hear about this right away. Motherfucker, if you're listening to this and you're all mad at me right now and shit, I want you to remember that I said this. You know, I... I hope that motherfucker comes back and keeps putting that video out and does this because this has been the funniest, most fun, awesome shit I have ever fucking seen. I feel super bad for Gooch, but the bottom line is, is I have enjoyed every second of it. I've enjoyed that people thought I was Sam Loomis. I mean, I, I'm, up, I mean I'm upset for the fact that, you know, like the value has been decreased in things yeah. that are owned by Kurt Gooch. That part upsets me. And I really meant that. And I defend him to the death that he put in the legwork and he deserves to reap the rewards for it. But as a drama hound online who loves to joke around with these people, I, you know, I've been enjoying it. I really have, you know, I mean, so that's it, man. I mean, you know, I, I think that this person is going to stop because they have come to the realization that I think they were unaware of other people really are involved they thought they could get away with this and they started worrying there could be consequences if I keep doing this. So maybe they stopped. Maybe that was enough of a warning shot for them. Like, you know, I don't know, but I'm telling you right now, Sam Loomis, uh, Mr. Andy, or if you're not Mr. Andy, you're some other guy and you want to punk me out, make me look dumb. Come out right now, man. Keep going. Put that shit up. Tell us who you are because I'm in. I'm I'm in for the whole deal. If you want to come out and say who you are, I would love to be proved wrong. And that right, then that right there is a perfect way to wrap this up. Roy, this is why we had you on. You're always a great guest. We love talking this stuff with you. Thank you so much for uh spending some time and just having some fun talking about this crazy inside kiss nerd uh, discussion. We appreciate so much, buddy. Thank and, and you. I, I hope that, you know, I got to tell you guys, I know that, you know, I mean, no disrespect. I know that there's a, a core circle of people that listen to your show and then they're close to this subject and everything. And I think that they will be able to follow everything that we've said here today. Oh yeah. But if there is anyone else out there that's trying to figure out what the fuck has been going on right now, they are just as confused as they were yesterday when Dylan <laughs> fucking Pagan was a rock journalist. Yeah. You know, well, uh, well you know, said. but, but, you know, I love you two guys. Fucking uh, uh, fuck you, Dominic. And uh, fuck you, Dylan Pagan. Uh, I'm Roy Goddamn. Fucking they call me the one man crime spree, the world champion of videos. The man that's causing all of this shit. Roy Goddamn. I'll see you guys later. All right. So needless to say, that was um, a little bit more explosive than maybe we have haven't bargained for. 
Um, he did drop some names. Uh, he didn't drop full names, but anybody who's in the kiss world, uh, the podcast community is aware of, uh, who he was referencing. Um, and like I said to Zeus, when you watch, you know, 60 minutes or, uh, any kind of major network, do an interview, the interviewer asks questions and the guest answers. And, you know, we are not responsible for his answers. Uh, we didn't know what the hell he was going to say, whether or not he had ideas or convictions about who Sam Loomis is. Apparently he does. Um, and Roy is kind of wired into that community. So whether or not what he says is accurate or, or not, we, we, we don't know. No one knows. Um, but it was very, very uh, interesting to hear his take on the story from the get go. The YouTube page, Kurt Gooch, who he thinks is involved, the story behind bootlegging and, uh, you know, licensing, etc. cetera, um, blown away. And Roy doesn't disappoint. Yeah, um, the couple of people that he named on there uh, and especially the one that he says point blank is Sam Loomis. Um, we don't know him from a hole in the wall if they aren't. Uh, they have a platform here. They can come here and, and say it. It's not a problem. Absolutely. Again, yep. We we didn't know what Roy was going to say. We we just asked him, do you have any idea? Can you come on? Do you have stuff? And he's just, yep, I've got it. And I think that this is what's going on. I'm happy to come on and tell it to you guys. Um, Tom has fostered that relationship and kudos to him. And uh, Roy trusts this show. And he comes on and he tells it like it is. now. Again, we don't sit here and say, yeah, this is the truth because this, but I listen to him. Uh, Tom listened to him and you guys listen. To him. Everybody make the, their own opinion. Um, I, I learned a shitload of things uh, from this episode. Uh, I hope that, uh, you know, that this mystery does get solved one of these days. Who knows? By the time this episode drops, it might get uh, uh, solved, but I, 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 I found this more fascinating than the first time we had Roy on. Yeah, when it comes to this kinds of stuff, whether it's Kiss Vision or this in, this inside bootlegging community underground stuff, uh, it fascinates me. Um, you know, like I said during the interview, I'm I'm into conspiracy theories. I find them entertaining and dramatic. Uh, and like Zeus says, you know, we we don't. You know, we're not saying that what Roy said is the gospel truth. We're telling you that in our opinions, in the the, the communications that I've had with Roy off recording, um, he's connected to a lot of what's going on in this world. And I understand that Roy has his own reputation. And there are people that are going to hear this and see that he's a guest and be like, oh, God, I can't believe you guys had Roy on again to talk about this. And that's your opinion. But I'm telling you that we wanted to have him on. He's got a lot to say. You heard it all. Um, yeah, and it was, uh, it was pretty much what we wanted from him in terms of, uh, his insight and opinion. Yeah. And, uh, there was some more off the air. Oh boy. There certainly was, um, that, uh, you know, gets me to kind of, uh, you know, harden my opinion, I guess. All uh, right. Yeah. Right. And same, and same with you. Uh, yep. Yep. But, uh, I'm sure you guys will have your opinion. And as always, we love discussing this stuff and try to do it without being too much of kiss tards. I, I, you know, I, I've seen uh, other people talking about this stuff online or other podcasts. God bless them. I just can't do it. I can't break down. Well, in fucking film clip, the 18th and 34 second mark, this one is uh, similar to this. Like, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't even think I've even seen any of those videos. I know they're out there and I'll see them on my, in my own time and break them down. The fun aspect of all this is the drama is the drama in the kiss tard community. That's right. That's, That's right. what fascinates me. Yep. Who's doing this? Why are they doing this? Who people think is doing it? it it's fascinating. Now, again, um, you know, if someone that got, uh, named doesn't think it's not him great we'll be happy to spread it the word when that gets uh 
you know, cleared or discovered or whatever. Mm -hmm. We have no dog in this fight. None. That's the big thing. Yeah, we don't have any. Right. That's a great way to. We don't have any dog in this fight. We don't. There's no self-interest here about who it is. We don't care who it is per se, meaning if it's person A, great. If it's person B, great. We just thought it was entertaining, interesting. We know that this caught the imagination of the kiss world. Um, it's it's dramatic. The kiss tards love the drama, the Facebook group discussions, the Twitter discussions. And for us, there's no one better than Roy to do it. Yeah, I, I will tell you, Tom, before we had him on, uh, you know, I told you, I'm like, I'm telling you, Tom, I think it's him. He loved those accusations. Yeah, I, I'm like, it's him. I just think yeah. he, 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 I said it to him, like, you got, you are a vindictive, angry person <laughs> that would be like, you know what? Fuck you. I don't care if I don't make yep. any money. I will do this. Uh, but he answered all this stuff. Yeah. And uh, I don't believe that anymore after listening with him and talking with him, especially a, a little bit more off the air, too. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. Absolutely. Anyway, Tom, what do we do next? We got our question of the week. And as always, our question of the week is brought to the great Fusion Tech Data and Electric. Fusion Tech is a recognized communications contractor specializing in the construction, splicing, testing, and documentation of all types of fiber optic networks. Along with that, Fusion Tech Electric can service all your electrical construction needs, commercial, industrial, and utility as well as electrical substation work and all UPS and DC power plant installation. Fusion Tech currently operates throughout the five boroughs of New York City, as well as New Jersey and the tri-state area, providing union labor with IBEW Local 3 in New York City and IBEW Local 164 and Local 102 in New Jersey. For more information about Fusion Tech, visit their website at fusiontech-llc.com or call them at 973 650 one three five seven yeah fusion tech all right so we got a question here from our good buddy jeff kinsley hey tom and zeus hope you guys had a blast at creatures fest i have a question for you if you could incorporate a single personality trait from each of the original members what would they be Or we could paraphrase it and say from one of the original members. If you can't, if you want to pick one, pick one. If you want to pick one, two, we always like to paraphrase these. And by the way, Jeff Kinsley, part of our wonderful Patreon family. Thank you, Jeff, for that and for sending us a a question. So Zeus, personality traits Hmm. from the original members. Um, I guess I would probably say the first thing that comes to mind is Gene's work ethic. Bingo, you stole that from me. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> yep. The, honestly, that was literally. I, just think I was gonna say Paul's sensitivity. Paul's uh, yeah. Paul's sense of humor. No. <laughs> do, on, yeah. Gene's work ethic jumps right out of the gate for me. Yep. And then the other the other one. If I if I was gonna pick another one, I, honestly, I would say Ace's sense of humor when it's con- when it's controlled. His s- goofiness when it's not like disruptive. I think is just infectious, which is why I think one of the reasons people love Ace. And I'm Italian, like Peter. I have a short fuse like him. So, Peter, <laughs> love you. Love you, brother. <laughs> Good night, brother. Paul, hey, you- I, I, I don't know if there's a single personality trait from Paul that I would want. Uh, and I mean that sincerely. Um, I would say determination. He is fucking okay. one determinate. Determined Drive. Motherfucker. Yeah. Drive. Okay. Okay. Let's yeah. say that. Let's say that. At least when he was younger, he's like, I, I don't want to be this, you know, chubby loser i want to be a rock star and he was right. determined to do it and he did yeah, it that's true it's true that's a great question jeff thank you buddy and uh, again thank you for being part of our great patreon family we appreciate it and yeah fusion tech and our good buddy joe decker with fusion tech thank you guys uh tom where can people find us start with our amazing awesome website Shoutoutloudcast.com. Please check us out. You got all the episodes there, all the rankings. You can shop for merch there. You can check out all of our wonderful guests and, and the links to their social media sites. You can look at our album review crew stuff, our Zeppelin Chronicle stuff, everything. Yeah, we're very proud of that website. It's great. A lot of fun, a lot of information. Check us out there. You can send us messages directly from the website too, 
or you can choose to use our email, which is shouted out loudcast at gmail.com. Uh, and we also have our social media that obviously you guys know we're very active Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can tag us, send pictures. And we've gotten a ton of great pictures from people. Thank you for sending those in. Uh, wearing the shout out loudcast shirts, whether it's out doing something or at a show or whatever. Thank you. You guys are awesome. And you can get those shirts by going on our website and clicking on the merch link. Um, and we're part of the wonderful Pantheon podcast network of shows, all different kinds of genres of music, tons of shows there now. Uh, and again, we're going to uh, sing the praise of our Patreon family, patreon.com and the app. You can search for us there. Tom, I always like to tell people to DM us, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we love getting them and we try to interact as much as we can. Uh, you can uh, subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube channel. <laughs> We're trying to get us to 700. So I, I say this all the time. Feel free to go on. And whether you subscribe, uh, listen to us on podcasts or listen to us on the YouTube channel, whichever one you use, still subscribe. It helps the show get out to the masses. And another thing that you can do for us is you can give us a five star, star. child review on Apple iTunes, on uh, Spotify, on uh, Facebook, anywhere you can. Good Pods is another one that people are using now. Yeah. Pod Chaser as well. As a matter of fact, Tom, we got one on Pod Chaser recently. All right. This is from Justo Jake or Justo Jake. I'm not sure how I pronounce it, but I. I apologize if I don't do it correctly. Jake, uh, what do you work for, Jake? I work for Moish. Yeah, I, I work for Mayflower. For Mayflower. Yeah, you got nervous because I was pulling wheelies. No <laughs> fucking stopping the toes. No nothing. Anyway, he writes, my absolute favorite podcast. Tom and Zeus are very entertaining, have great guests, and are extremely funny. I never miss their shows. Awesome. Thank you, buddy. That's amazing. Thank you for taking the time to write that awesome review. Appreciate it. Yeah. And we are very grateful. If you do a five star uh, child review for us, we'll certainly read it on the air and uh, tip the hat to you. Thank you very much. While we're tipping our hat, we always for, seem to forget to do this. Our our buddy, Tom Dust, people are loving, loving his intro. We We get constant feedback on that. Yep. That it's very <clears throat> addictive. And Love Tom it. Tom did a great job with that. Um, when we thank Tom a lot, and he's done a lot for the show, and we're really appreciative. Thank you, Tom. Absolutely, Tom. Yep. Love it. Thank you so much. And then you can always go to our fan fucking tastic website. Uh, on our website, you can see rankings, reviews, episodes, photos, our friends of the show, guests. You can click on them and see what. You know, their websites, you can click on uh, the Loudcasters page. We've gotten a ton. A few people have sent us in new ones of them in the shouted out Loudcast gear. And that's what we'll put you on. Now, you playing with your pet turtle is not what we're going to put on the Loudcaster section. If you're wearing your shouted out Loudcast gear or you put your your pet turtle in a shouted out Loudcast koozie or something, then, yes, it would go on our loudcaster section, exactly. but uh, we've been putting them out there. We have the creatures fest section. We have the cruise section and uh, oh, speaking of that, Tom, we still have one spot, I think open on our supposed maybe ticket on the cruise, which mm -hmm. is the second cruise, uh, the original cruise uh, that we're scheduled for right now. Um, again, the website is shouted out loudcast.com. Shoutitoutloudcast.com. The email for us is uh, shoutitoutloudcast at gmail.com. Shoutitoutloudcast at gmail.com. So if uh, we have the wrong Sam Loomis and you want to tell us you are the Sam Loomis, feel free to email us. Absolutely. Let Please. us know. Yes. Tom, what we usually do is we end with famous last words, and those are lyrics to kiss songs. You got any? Oh, I do from one of your favorites. Okay. What goes on? Behind closed doors, private wounds, open sores. You're your own worst enemy and cheap thrills bring you to your knees. The fuck is that? While the city sleeps. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, fucking terrible. <laughs> I'm, I think oh. I'm the only one that likes that song. Oh, 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 oh boy. <laughs> it's a big one. Oh, well, I've got one for you, Tom. Okay. Um, this one goes like this. Well, if it's too hot, you are too cold. <laughs> if it's too loud, you are too old. Baby, let go of what you can't hold. Baby, you are too hot and cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I got see. <laughs> what a great way to end an episode. Uh, Roy Dam. Tom, Loudcasters, Kiss Army, thank you. Huge thanks to Roy Dam for taking the time to uh, get into some conspiracy theories, some deep woods kiss nerdery. We love it. Uh, all you guys out there, love you guys. You're all the best. Zeus, as always, my friend, thank you. Peace out, Girl Scout. This is bullshit. I want Bush. Pan down. Uh-huh. We've got Bush. Oh, hair pie. <laughs> <laughs>